The ecological footprint is a resource accounting tool. So like we have accounting tools for money, that we want to know how much money do we earn and how much money do we spend in order to know to what extent our assets are going up or down, uh, we have the same need with our resources. Like any nation, I think it's more important to know for nations how much ecological capacity they have available and how much they use rather than knowing how much gold they have in the national banks. Because in the end, what we really depend on is natural capital, the ecologically productive force of nature. And so the ecological footprint is a resource accounting tool very much for this natural capital. So it does this both on the income side or on the supply side uh, to find out how much ecologically productive capacity is available. And we do that in number of hectares or acres for Americans uh, are available in a region or on the planet that provide these kind of services. So these, uh, these areas are forest areas, pasture areas, crop areas, fisheries, um, but also the urban areas, um, which partially are built over, but mostly stand on the most productive land that we have on this planet. So that's what we have available. Then we can compare what we have available against what we use. Like if we have a farm, it's obvious that like we, we could consume milk that takes a cow to uh, graze. Uh, so this area necessary to pro provide for the cow that then provides the milk that I will uh, eventually consume. Um, so in the same way for all resources, we can find out how much area is necessary to provide the resources that I consume for fibers, food, uh, energy, waste absorption, etc. that adds up to like a, a spread farm around the world. Like by, I don't know, by nine o'clock in the morning, probably I've already visited about three continents. Uh, like for the, let's say, I may wear some wool from New Zealand sheep. I may drink some coffee from Colombia. I may eat some wheat from I don't know, the Midwest, the United States. So all these pieces are used by me to provide the resources that I consume. So we can do a resource balance for myself, so we can find out how much ecologic capacity I use. We can do it for a whole nation. When we do it for the world as a whole, what we see is on average, we have about 1.8 hectares of ecologically productive space available on this planet. Or in American measures, that would be about 4.4 .4 acres of ecologically ecological productive space. That includes also productive sea space. And then we can compare that with how much we use. Our global accounts, our global average, shows that we use about five and a half acres or 2.2 hectares of ecologically productive space, or about 25% more than what is available. Now you could ask, how is it possible to use more space than what we have available? And essentially, it's the same as how can we spend more money than what we earn. Of course, that's possible for some time because we deplete our assets. In the same way, we can cut, for example, trees more rapidly than they regrow. So if we assume we had one acre of forest and we use the forest, so we harvest timber from that forest at twice the rate of what the forest regenerates, that's like using double the area at the regenerative rate. So the footprint of the products would be two acres, while the biocapacity would be one acre. So in this case, we would use twice the capacity of what we have available. If we look at all the resource flows combined together that humanity demands today, actually the last numbers for 2003, um, we believe that or our, our conclusion comes to that we use about 30% more or 25% more than what nature has available. And what's the effect? We call that overshoot, that we use resources more rapidly, it leads to uh, an ecological debt, an accumulation of ecological debt, like, for example, accumulation of CO2 in the atmosphere, deforestation, soil loss, um, or overuse of freshwater resources, etc. So overall, like with money, in the long run, we cannot spend more than what we earn, otherwise we go towards bankruptcy. And that's what the ecological footprint tries to avoid, helping humanity and nation by nation to avoid ecological bankruptcy. Now, bankruptcy is a serious concern. In the financial world, I would say in the ecological world, it's even more serious because at a financial bankruptcy, you can move out again later on and kind of rebuild your life. But with ecological bankruptcy, it's very hard to move out of because ecological assets are the underlying wealth on which any other wealth depends.